G'day cobbers, welcome back to the bush. In this episode of Lockhouse Full Driving, we're looking at DC relays for automotive applications. Solid state versus conventional mechanical relays. Which one's more versatile? Which one's more reliable? Which one should you be using in the back of your full drive? Stick around to the end of the video because we're actually going to drag race these two and see which one's faster. First up, let's work out how conventional relay works. And here's the basics of what's inside that electromagnetic mechanical relay. So we've got our power supply here of 13.8 volts and then we've got another power supply here of an additional 13.8 volts to illuminate our lamp. And you'll notice at the moment because we're not completing this circuit here because our switch inside our relay is open, our lamp isn't illuminated. So what we do is we turn on the control circuit switch as we did just then and what it does to that coil, it creates a magnetic field. That magnetic field then closes this switch here. That in turn completes our circuit. So therefore, our lamp can illuminate. Rightio, simple as that. Let's look at how we're actually going to wire it up on an actual relay. And this is the underside of the electromagnetic mechanical automotive 12 volt relay. So the coil is located in between pin 86 and pin 85. And because this switch isn't engaged at the moment, it's not energized. Now we have what's called a common terminal on pin 30, and it's not connected to pin 87, but it is connected to pin 87A right there in the center. So the connection in between pin 87 and pin 30 is called normally open and pin 87A and pin 30 is called normally closed. So when you energize the connection in between pin 86 and pin 85, it actually disconnects in between pin 30 and pin 87A, but connects in between pin 30 and pin 87. All right, I hope you're all following along. <laughs> so let's turn on that switch and see what happens. When we turn on that switch, we energize the coil in between pin 86 and pin 85 and make contact in between pin 30 and pin 87. That, of course, then turns on the lamp. Beauty. Okay, and now I know that's all crystal clear with everybody. <laughs> let's move on to the solid state relays. Now, the heart of every solid state relay is an electronic switch known as a MOSFET, otherwise known as a power transistor. Now, MOSFET is just an acronym, and it stands for Metal Oxide Semiconductor Field Effect Transistor, which is a mighty big mouthful. But because we already understand how electromagnetic mechanical relays work, we can conceptually understand how a MOSFET works, because it's very, very similar. Now, we have a drain and a source, and we can think of the drain and the source as the output. And we also have a gate. Now we can think of the gate as a controlling input like we do with a conventional relay where we connect up the power to the coil. Okay, now this particular sort of MOSFET is known as an N-channel enhancement mode MOSFET. Let's break that down because it's very simple. N-channel just means in order to change the state in between the drain and the source, we need to apply positive voltage to that gate. Conversely, we get P-channel type MOSFETs, which require negative voltage at the gate in order to change the state in between the drain and the source. Now, enhancement mode, that just means normally open. So normally open between the drain and the source when we're not applying any voltage to the gate. Conversely, again, depletion mode MOSFETs, and that just means normally closed in between the drain and the source. Okay, let's put a simplistic circuit around this MOSFET to show you how it works. Now, just like before with our conventional relay, we don't have a connection in between the drain and the source with this particular sort of MOSFET, so we don't complete the circuit and the lamp doesn't illuminate. What it's waiting for is a positive voltage at the gate, which we can do with the switch here, but we've got a different component here and that's called a resistor. And all the resistor does is drop down that 13.8 volt to an appropriate amount for the gate. We've also got what's called a drop down resistor here. So when it's activated, when you disconnect the switch then, in order to bring the voltage of the gate down to a sufficient amount where it's going to turn the MOSFET off. So let's turn on that switch and then applies a voltage to the gate which changes the state from the drain to the source and illuminates our light. Beauty, all right, now we know what a MOSFET does, let's see the implementation in a solid state relay. Now we're all familiar with how the MOSFET works by now, but what we're probably not familiar with is how this section of the circuit works, and it's called an opto-isolator. And it literally does what the name says. It optically isolates the input 
from the output using an LED and a light sensitive transistor here. So if we energize the input circuit, it then illuminates this LED here. The light sensitive transistor here then turns on and applies a voltage to the gate, which then illuminates the lamp. And that's it, ladies and gentlemen. That's how a solid state relay works. Fantastic. Let's look at how we're going to wire it up. Now, thankfully, these DC solid state relays are really easy to wire up and they even have an indicator light, most of them. So we have an input circuit with a switch and an output circuit to illuminate this lamp here. So when we hit the switch, it then does all its magic inside the black box. And finally, if it doesn't let out that magic smoke, illuminates that lamp. They're that simple to wire up. But why would you use a solid state relay over a mechanical relay? Let's have a look at that. Okay, so now I've created the circuit, admittedly with one power supply, via the switch, through this relay, illuminating that globe. So let's give it a go. And as you can see, it works, no problems. But what I thought might be fun was to check how fast this actually operates. So I'm going to set up the oscilloscope, and we'll have a look at that. Okay, now let's check out the speed of this relay here. So I've connected up a 13.8 volt power supply to this switch here. I've actually actually disconnected the lamp here because it was messing with the waveforms. <laughs> Okay, so, so I've turned on the oscilloscope and I'll put that on screen now and as you can see I've put channel 1 and that's our input that's from our switch and channel 2 that's our output from our relay and if we look across to the right hand side here 2 milliseconds per division so in between here and here is 0 0.002 of a second and between here and here is 0 0.002 of a second it's also 5 volts per division so between here and here is 5 volts, and between here and here is 5 volts. So let's turn it on, and we can just have a quick look at the waveform. So you can see, between here and here is 13.8 volts, and between here and here is 13.8 volts. So I turn it off again. Now I'll put it into trigger mode. So single capture. I'll adjust the trigger just above 0 volts and I'll leave the trigger right in the middle there so we can have a decent look. Okay, so I'll turn it on and we'll capture that waveform. Right, yeah, a little bit dirty on the input. <laughs> it's not unusual for a switch. But what I'll be able to do is if I get the cursor, I'll actually be able to measure how far it is. So I'll put it on cross. So in between there and there, if we go down to the bottom there, that's 8.09 milliseconds. So it's 0 0.008 seconds. Pretty fast, but what about the solid state relay? Let's check that out now. Now you can obviously operate a solid state relay just like you can a normal electromechanical relay with a switch. But to check how fast it reacts, well, we're gonna to have to break out the big guns for that one. So let's get into that. Okay, now let's check exactly how fast this solid state relay is. So I've set the signal generator to a thousand hertz and 50% duty cycle. So we'll turn it on and you can see the top trace that's coming out the signal generator and the bottom trace is coming out of the solid state relay. Okay, so I'll freeze it. There we go. Now, if I go to the cursor, I should be able to measure it. So type, go to cross. Now in between this point here and this point here, that's the lag. And it's 82.2 .2 microseconds. So that's 82.2 .2 millionths of a second. That's a considerably smaller amount of time. So let's compare the two. And here we have it, the reaction times between mechanical and solid state relays. On the left hand side here we've got the time in seconds, along the bottom here conventional and solid state. Let's have a look at the conventional relay first. That came in at a scrap over 8 milliseconds. What about the solid state? Well that came in at 82 microseconds. So it's considerably smaller. In fact, the conventional relay is 9,671% slower than a solid state relay. And now we know exactly how blindingly fast a solid state relay is in comparison with a traditional old mechanical relay. Let's have a look at how we can use that to our advantage. Well, one way is what's called pulse width modulation. Now, pulse width modulation is a technique used in order to vary the speed of, let's say, fans or maybe dim the intensity of lights. And it's a very efficient means in comparison with using a traditional resistive circuit. Let's show you how it works. So firstly, it's the amount of on at full voltage 
in comparison with the amount of off. Now, this is 25% on, but we can bury that. We can actually go to 50% on, or maybe even go to 75% on. So in this case, if this were an electric motor, it would be faster here, about mid-range here, and a lot slower here with a traditional DC brush motor. This would also be able to use in controlling the intensity of those lights. Now, let's show you how we can do it with a solid-state relay. Now, on the healing bench in a second, I'll be using one of these, which is called a signal generator. And a signal generator can generate a square wave, just like we saw before, and it can vary the duty cycle or the amount of on time. So when you generate that signal, we'll be able to illuminate that lamp, and we'll be able to change the intensity of the light coming from that lamp. Let's get to the healing bench and give it a crack. Okay, now this time I've got the signal generator connected to the input of the solid state relay. It's set to 100 hertz. It's at 0% duty cycle at the moment. Now the output is connected to a power supply, 13.8 volt, which is in turn running this globe here. So let's start ramping up. 10, 20, 30. And as you can see, the globe's starting to illuminate brighter and brighter. 50%. And we're up to 70% now. 90%. And that's at 100% brightness. And then we can ramp it down. We're at 50% now, 40, 30, 20, 10, and finally off. Now this works just as well in controlling the speed of an electric motor, a DC brushed electric motor, as it does as controlling the brightness of this globe here. Let's have a look at it on the oscilloscope. Okay, now channel one on our oscilloscope is the input and channel two is the output from the relay, from the solid state relay. So we'll ramp it up. So firstly, 10%, so this is the input. And the input is 3.29 volts. That's coming directly from the signal generator. And our output through our relay is going at 13.9 volts. Okay, let's ramp it up to 20%. And as you can see, the on time is starting to get a little bit wider. And so is the on time of the relay. 30, 40, 50, right through to 60, 70, 80, 90. We're almost continually on. And then 100% is continually on so continually on in the input and continually on in the output okay so we can ramp it down again so 90 percent is 3.24 volts input and the output is 14.2 volts and we can keep going down right down to 10 percent we're at 40 percent at the moment 20 percent 10 percent and then completely off and that's how pulse width modulation works and that'll work equally well for not only dimming a globe but controlling the speed of a dc brush motor as well so what do we think in the end well as far as reliability is concerned the solid state relay has that race one there are no moving parts to be affected by corrugations or anything like that what about versatility well not only can this one turn on a set of driving lights you can also use it in pulse width modulation applications to say vary the speed of a fan on a transmission cooler depending on how hot it is. So again, that's a plus for the solid state relay. But when it comes to cost, well, our conventional relay is about a quarter of the price of a solid state relay. Now that's gonna come down with time, obviously, but at the moment, <laughs> the conventional relay has that race well and truly won. So it depends on your application because Conventional relays aren't exactly unreliable, but they're just not as reliable as no moving parts in a solid state relay. So it's horses for courses. If you have the need or a pulse width modulation application, it's solid state relay every time. Otherwise, conventional relay. Righto guys, now if you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And if you didn't, by all means, give it a thumbs down. Not once, not thrice, but twice. Thanks guys, we'll see you in the next one.